War Diary Day 556 of Russia's war against Ukraine. So, um, this summer's been tough. The Ukrainian counter-offensive. A lot of people have hopes, including obviously me, and it hasn't panned out that way. And so it's got depressing. And I remember there's a moment when, um, when I met my old pal Vlad Demchenko, and he said, listen, the news from the front line is bad. Um, that said, the news in the last few days is really kind of changing. Um, first of all, what's happening is the Ukrainian army, although it's slow, it's a hard grind, they're losing far too many people, but they're moving. They're moving at the rate of roughly 500 meters a day. And what that means is that hopefully by mid-October, they will have got to a place called Tokmak. And this is super important because if they get to Tokmak, if they punch through, this is in the Zaporizhia Oblast or county, they hit that, then they can fire at the, the main Russian road, which links Russia proper, if you like, with the occupying army, which is garrisoned um, on, the, on the other bank of the Dnipro, immediately south of Kherson. And they hit that road, they hit the supplies, and it means that there's certainly a possibility, at least, of a local victory, but a significant one, before the winter is out. And then in the spring, the Ukrainians are going to have another go, but this time there will be F-16s, and this time there will be the Abrahams tanks from the United States. They should have arrived a long time ago. It's desperate. The Russian strategy is, of course, to hope a Trump victory and even as I say that you know my blood runs cold the Russians want Trump to win because that way they can defeat Ukraine it's sickening but it's true Donald Trump fuck off oh and Vladimir Putin do fuck off <laughs>